Hi, welcome to the course. In this course, the goal is to teach you about machine learning, specifically in Python, by using the library scikit-learn. We've worked really hard to create this course and we're super stoked to teach you all about machine learning. So first of all, who are we? So my name is Eirik, I'll be one of your instructors. I'm working as a professional data scientist. The other instructor is Stina, and she has an academic background and has taught programming at a university. Together, I think we bring both a theoretical and practical approach to machine learning. So in this course, we'll kind of alternate between different topics so that Stina will take one topic and then I will take the next and she will take the one after that and so on. And I think this gives you a good balance and also that you see more than one viewpoint of machine learning. So in this course, you'll learn tons of topics. Here is a diagram showing some of them. You can see here that it's divided into blue and green. The blue topics here on the left is the ones I'll be teaching and the green topics on the right is the ones Stina will be teaching. And you can see here at the top left, we started what is machine learning. Then Stina will tell you about linear regression, one of the oldest and most robust machine learning methods. Then I'll talk about logistic regression. Stina will talk about pre-processing and pipelines. I'll talk about polynomial regression and so on. You can see in this diagram that we cover many topics and these are not all of them by a long shot. So if you have some exposure to machine learning previously, you can see in this diagram that we cover a big range of machine learning and many of the most common algorithms. In addition to teaching you about algorithms, we also teach you about concepts. So that can range from different metrics you can use for classification problems, all the way to understanding the bias variance trade-off. This might not make any sense to you now, and that's completely okay, but at the end of this course, you'll know all about both the theory and practice of machine learning. So before we jump in to learn about machine learning, I just want to mention that the next three videos are prerequisite videos. So what I mean is that these three videos will teach you some background knowledge that is really useful to know before jumping into machine learning in Python. Stina will do these three videos. So the first one is about installing Jupyter Notebook and the basic usage of this. So Jupyter Notebooks are a great environment for experimentation and we will use this throughout the course. The second video is about working with vectors and matrices in the library called NumPy. So under the hood, when you do machine learning, there is a lot of vector and matrices going on. And while you don't need to have a full grasp of linear algebra to do machine learning, it is good to know some basics, especially in the library NumPy. Finally, the third video is about working with tabular data in the library called Pandas. So this type of data you've maybe seen in an Excel file or maybe from a database. And working with tabular data is crucial to be able to do machine learning. And I've written here, if you already know some of these topics, then you can safely skip ahead. And if you don't, you can watch them now, but of course know that you can always refer back to these videos later. So you don't need to despair if you don't catch everything. So I would encourage you, even though you don't understand everything in these videos, to simply plow on ahead and work your way through the next material. So again, we're super happy that you've chosen to take this course and we hope you enjoy yourself. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon. Hi, and welcome to this installation video where we are going to install Jupyter Notebook. So in this course, we are going to work with Jupyter Notebook for two main reasons. First of all, the SciPy stack is already installed into Jupyter Notebook, so you don't need to write pip install to install a bunch of packages. And secondly, Jupyter Notebook is great for data exploration, which we are going to do quite a bit. Okay, so first of all, we need to install Jupyter Notebook. So the easiest way is to install something called Anaconda, which has Jupyter Notebook in it. So then we can go here to download, and then it downloads the package containing Jupyter Notebook. So you can just go to the Anaconda webpage, which you can find in the resources to this video, and just download the package and install it. So just pause the video until you have installed Anaconda, and then we can go further exploring the Jupyter Notebook environment a bit. See you then. Now that you have installed Anaconda, then we can go into Jupyter Notebook. So here you can just search for Jupyter Notebook and it should come up here. So let's press it. Another way to go into Jupyter Notebook is to search for Anaconda. And let's go into Anaconda Navigator. And here you see Anaconda Navigator. 
And here you also see Jupyter Notebook and you can press launch to open Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so here is Jupyter Notebook and here you can see your root folder, whatever it is. But to open a new Jupyter Notebook, let's go up here with new and press Python 3. Okay, so now we are inside Jupyter Notebook. So let's go through some basic things. First of all, up here, we have the title of the document that we can change, for instance, to Jupyter test and then press enter. And now we have given our file a new name. If we want to run some code, we can, for instance, do it here. And then we can just write normal Python code. For instance, let's say that I want to sum four plus five and just find the result. Then I can press run here and I get that the answer is nine in the cell below. What you also see, so this here is called the cell, the thing that's in blue here. And under it, we have now an other cell. And here we can also write some Python code. For instance, we can define a variable. For instance, the variable five here and just go up and run this cell. And now the variable var is defined and I can go here and run it and you see that five is returned. Okay, so here you see that each cell has a number and that is the order in which it was run. So for instance, this was the first cell I run, then I run this cell and then I run this cell. What I can do is go up here and for instance, type var and then I can run this top cell again and then you see that the var is defined, even though it's defined here, because this cell is now run after the cell here, where I defined what this variable here is. So when you are doing Jupyter Notebook and running a bunch of different cell, it would always save all the variables and stuff you have defined in the previous cells. Okay, let's say that we want to delete all the variables that we have saved. So. For instance, we want to delete the var variable and also remove all the code that we have already run. Then what we need to do is to press kernel and for instance, restart and clear output. And now since we are deleting all the code that we have run on all the changes we have made, we need to actually confirm the choice. And now you see that all the numbers here were removed. So if I, for instance, try to run this cell again, you see that we get an error message since now var is not defined. So these cells that contain all the code are known as code cells, but there exist other kinds of cells, for instance, markdown cells. So let's say that in this cell here, we want to create a markdown cell, which is a cell which contains text and not code. So let's go up here, press cell, and then we can go to cell type, and then we can go to markdown instead. So now you see that this index thing here disappeared from this cell, and what you can do is to write text instead of writing code. So let's write this is a markdown cell. And we can run this cell as well. And here you see that it formatted the cell as text. So what you can do in Markdown cell is to create comments or headlines of your code to say what you are doing next. So for instance, to create a headline, we can use the so-called hashtag symbol or the octoforp symbol and just write this is a title. So now we see that this title here is in a bigger font than the normal text down here. And you can also, for instance, create subtitles by just adding another octopher like this. And now we have a bit smaller text than the title. So let's say that you want to create this cell here back into a code cell. Then you can just go to the cell, go up here again, cell type, 
and press code. And now this is a code cell again. And if I try to run it by pressing run here, it will give me a syntax error because this isn't Python. So let's go back, cell type, markdown, and run again. So the final thing I want you to know is that there are several shortcuts in Jupyter Notebook. For instance, if I write V and then tap, it will try to complete it. And you see that it either want to complete it with VARs or videos. But if I run this cell up here, and now down here, press the tab button, we see that we can also complete it with VAR. And then we can press enter to put in the VAR variable. Another thing is that if you hold in shift and then press enter, you will run the current cell you are using and make another cell below. So instead of pressing run by going up here, you can just hold in shift and press enter. So Jupyter Notebook contains several shortcuts like this. And if you want to see them all, you can press help, keyboard shortcuts, and the shortcut here is H. And here are all the shortcuts that you can see. So Jupyter Notebook has two modes, edit mode and command mode. And to change between them, you can press the escape button. So if you are familiar with, for instance, Vim, it's very similar. So this was a short introduction into Jupyter Notebook. So if you're having problems with anything, don't hesitate to ask questions. So in the next video, we are going to work with NumPy, so see you then.